let's discuss the history of health savings accounts. Health savings accounts, or HSAs, are somewhat new to the healthcare industry, only having made their debut in 2003. However, the concept of HSAs started coming together in the 1980s when Congress began discussing medical savings accounts, or MSAs. Medical savings accounts were originally intended to allow healthcare consumers to set aside tax-free money specifically for medical expenses, and then they could spend these savings tax-free. Sound familiar? MSAs finally took the stage in 1996 with the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Over a five-year period, MSAs were tested on employees of small firms, 50 employees or less, and the self-employed individuals. But it proved to be pretty short-lived as the MSA experiment wasn't all smooth sailing. HIPAA laws restricted MSAs from becoming available to all American consumers. MSA deposits were also subject to income and payroll taxes, and unspent funds could not be rolled over to accumulate and earn tax-free interest. Well, on February 28, 2001, President George W. Bush proposed that MSAs become permanent and that certain HIPAA restrictions be lifted. The Bush administration suggested that MSAs be made available to anyone with a high deductible health plan. As existing MSA laws were set to expire in 2003, the government weighed various health savings options. Ultimately, only 150,000 MSAs were opened before HSAs became the preferred health savings method. If we weigh the options, what happened was the White House wanted to create health savings accounts that were available to all U.S. taxpayers and they could pay for any medical expenses. The hope was that such a savings tool could even serve as a retirement vehicle. It all sounded great, but Congress was shaken by such an account's implications on the U.S. budget. Now, another step toward the birth of HSAs was taken with the new ruling of Health Reimbursement Arrangements, or HRAs. HRAs are health plans set up by employers for their employees. Employers could decide how much they wanted to contribute to the plan, and employees could request reimbursement for medical expenses up to the determined amount. Now, unlike HSAs, they're not accounts. That means employees cannot contribute to HRAs nor withdraw funds. But then, in June 2002, the U.S. Treasury Department issued a ruling clarifying that HRA funds could be rolled over from year to year tax-free. So that was a step in the right direction, but HRAs could never be cashed out and rarely stayed in place amidst a job change. So let's look at present-day HSAs. As an amendment to the Medicare Prescription Drug Improvement and Modernization Act, HSAs were officially signed into law on December 8, 2003, and they became available to U.S. taxpayers with high deductible health plans on January 1, 2004. And they've evolved into an unmatched savings tool. But unlike MSAs, they provide a triple tax advantage. Tax-free contributions, tax-free growth, and tax-free spending. And unlike HRAs, they are an account and employees can contribute and withdraw funds from them. Combining HSAs with high deductible health savings plans is arguably the best way to keep healthcare costs down. High deductibles mean lower premiums and tax-free HSA funds can be used to pay off deductible amounts. Through Motive Health's member portal, our members can check their HSA balance at any time and even take advantage of in-house investing. Call us 24-7-365 at 844-234-4472 with any questions and learn more at motivehealth.com forward slash HSA.